Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jersey. I'm going to show you how to use walnut dye to dye several things to make them look primitive, antique, aged, and old. I got this basket last week at an antique store for $9. I'm going to show you how I will use the walnut hulls that I made a dye into last fall to dye this basket. I age a lot of baskets like this. This one I recently got a few months ago for a few dollars. It was so bright white, I put the whole thing in a bath of walnut dye. I also make primitive dolls like this one and dyed with walnut hulls. With this one, I put the liquid in a bowl and I dab it on. I don't want the whole thing solid color. So when you're doing it like this, you get more control. And if it's too dark, you dab it in water and you just take it off. And her dress was done, linen pants, and her feet and hands. You can take old sheets and very lightly dye them and you can make old rag of balls. Speaking of baskets, I do make some baskets. I buy more than I make. But this is some of my basket making material. I usually don't dye it before I make the basket. I'm a always make the basket and then I dye it. This is a linen bag that I dyed before I did the embroidery with my embroidery machine. But this dye is really, really nice. Linen, wool, cotton. And the great thing about walnut hulls, you don't need a mordant. You don't need to use alum. You don't use need the vinegar. You don't need anything to set it. These are the primitive dolls I made last month for Valentine's. This was like a really brightish pink. Everything was dyed with walnut hulls. Same thing, I used the brush to dab it on. Same thing with my cotton. I dye my cotton. I'll show you that in a minute. I only use natural fibers like cotton to stuff my dolls. And here's my natural cotton. I just filled the jar up because I'm completely out of the dyed natural cotton with the walnut hulls. So I'm going to wet this, dye it with the walnut hulls, and then put it in that screen that Raymond just showed you a second ago. So when you have your primitive doll and you want to poke some out, it's naturally dyed no matter where. It's like the old, it looks so old. You don't want bright white cotton coming out of a hole. That's why I like to dye the cotton. I only use it for primitive dolls. And here's the cotton all done. See how beautiful it looks naturally old. And this is how bright white it was. So it toned it down really, really nice. Now when I get done, dyeing the basket tonight. I will have leftover dye. This is 100% wool. This is a wool scarf that's been felted. These are going to go in the dye bath. It will totally tone them down to like this. This is all my pennies that I make and I walnut hull dye. It tones it down. This is way too bright. I don't work with colors like this. I like earth tones. So you can get this will be just like this. It will tone it down and look beautiful. I just cut these extra ones tonight for another project I'm making. So I have the walnut hull juice out. I'm going to dye this, dye these. This is cotton thread and I mute dye it. I don't want it perfect. So it's different shades of walnut hulls and that's what I do for the penny rugs. Now this is alpaca. It's been freshly washed. And I just took it out of the screen. We made that screen. It's a drying screen for alpaca and cotton. So what I like to do, once it's been washed, I wash it in my ringer washer. This is all clean. I will dye this in walnut hull liquid. Card it on my drum carter and then spin it. I don't like to spin and then dye. I like to dye first. These flower sack towels are gonna come out gorgeous. I like to use these when I wrap my breads and things like that. Once they get kind of stained and they're not bright anymore, I always give them a walnut hull bath. They will come out gorgeous. These I don't want muddled if I can help it. I like to lay them straight down and have them all one color, but I wet them first. These I had next to my wood stove. They're all nice and dried. If we have another cool morning or night, I will just put some water halfway up and I'll let it simmer all day and then I'll strain it and make the juice that I'm about to show you. If you know me, I dehydrate anything. Once the walnut hulls are done making their tea liquid, 
whatever you want to call it, I grind down the hulls into a powder. You can actually buy this online. And what this is good for, I'll put some in a jar in the house with boiling water, water on demand on tap. And if I just need to touch up something, I can do it just with a brush. This is for rainy days when I don't feel like messing with all the liquid. This is excellent. And this is the juice. This is 100% walnut juice dye, walnut hull dye. It's concentrated, highly concentrated. And I have already used this much since I made it in the fall. So now I can fill up that jar again. My basket is all soaked, so let's get started. I used to bathe my son in this. When I got baby ducks, they would swim in this. And now I'm using it for dyeing. It has come full circle. And I also did a bedspread that I got for $8 years ago. I put it in my ringer washer and put a lot of dye in it. At first I wet it, of course. I wet everything before I dye it. And it's probably been washed 20 times and it has not faded. I also dye my rag rugs after I weave them. Most of the time when I use old cotton sheets, I'll either dye the sheet first, but I find it easier to dye the rag rugs. This way the warp threads, the strings that hold the rug together, all get dyed naturally and it's all toned together. Imperative, you really should use gloves or you're gonna walk around with stained brown hands. Now many times with baskets, I'll pour the dye in here, do my thing, and then pour it right back in. But since I'm gonna be dyeing quite a bit of things tonight, I think I'm gonna pour this into the tub and just use the brush because I'm gonna be dyeing cotton tonight, wool tonight, and the flour sack towels. You wanna to do this outside. You can dilute this once it's in the bathtub. It, it does stink, let me tell you. It's, it smells stinky, but it's almost like a fermented walnut hull. I wash the basket and I let it soak 15 minutes and I use the brush go all over it. I do not rinse this off. This will age it beautiful. Highly recommend to do this outside. That's why I have the walnut hull powder for when I want to do something inside and I can't be outside. At least I can do a little bit. And I only go over it once, just basically just make sure everything gets brushed in. When I got this home, I hit it with the air compressor and got all the dust off. And then right now when I washed it, I made sure there was no dust or dirt in it. I'm going to go ahead and finish this basket and I'll show you the results when it's done. And now's a good time to let it hang and of course the bottom will be darker. In about 20 minutes I'll come out and I'll just take some of this and I'll brush it up on the top. But this is how I always do my baskets. A special note, don't leave them outside because the raccoons are very curious and they have knocked my baskets down. So once it gets dark I'll take it in the house. It'll be done dripping by then. Sometimes I would, if I want the top of the basket darker, I'll take the hook and put it through a little reed and let it hang upside down. But this looks natural. This is the way I like it. It came out really nice. Really pleased with it. The inside it looks even better. Okay, and these are the flower sack towels. You can leave them as dark or as light as you want. This has been watered down about 50%. These were done in cold water almost all the time you want to dye with your hulls heated. I use a big roaster pan for that. You can see how beautiful that is. It's like a natural linen color. Now, if you had some grease spots, it will actually intensify and look really nice. And I put it in like a fan fold and let it sit. A couple of these, when we're all done tonight, I'm gonna leave them right in the bowl so they'll get really dark. And that's it, that's how that's done. And speaking of baskets, this is a basket I made with the children when they were homeschooled roughly 30 years ago. It got broken over the years. We really use our baskets. And this is where I store my cotton. I can hang it on a nail or something when I'm working and just pull it out when I'm stuffing my dolls. And here is something else that I put in the walnut hulls two years ago. I got these for I think 50 cents or a dollar at Michael's after Christmas. 
super cheap and I put it in the walnut halls walnut hall bath that I had some left over and I just made a little pillow insert and then I put it on my bed like this during Christmas time really toned it down nice and I did this 21 years ago and I also put some walnut hull juice on it. I quickly emerged it, wrung it out, and then immediately hit certain spots with the brush and made it darker to really make it look vintage inside of this old, old frame. And this is a bedspread I think I got for $8. Let me see if I can hone in on how dark it is. This is really beautiful. It's not picking up the true colors. But this is crocheted. I got it at the thrift store. I lay it on my whole bed under a sheet that I also walnut dyed. It looks beautiful in the summertime. This one, I wet it in the ringer washer, pulled it out, add the walnut hull liquid, add a little bit more hot, hot, hot water, put it back in, let it sit overnight, then I hand wrung it out, brought it in, laid it in my clawfoot bathtub to drain even more, and then I put it out on the rocks over a sheet to dry. Beautiful, this has been washed several times and it has not faded one bit. This is the roaster that I heat up all the walnut hulls in when I'm not using my wood stove. And this is where I will add my fabric, wool, cotton, bedspreads, whatever after it's been wet. I don't know if you can see the difference. These were done, now these were done in the cold water. Had I put these in the walnut hulls with the cotton outside, it would have really got darker, but this is a muted tone. It looks just like linen. And that's the difference between the two. Really beautiful. So even the little grease spot from when I covered my bread or something, it adds to it. And this has been washed after I did this the other night and hung on the line to dry. I do that about once a year. I take all my old flower sack towels and go dye them. Now here's a rug that I wove years ago. I had a primitive couch reupholstered and this was the fabric that I did. This was old cotton sheets. By the time I got to weave this, I already had all my sheets dyed and I did not want to over dye it. We left this a little bright white. This is the warp that goes through this way. Usually when I get done with my rag rugs, I dye them all at once, but I didn't want to tone down this red anymore. I dyed the whole sheet. I have plenty old 100% cotton sheets. I dye them first, hang them in the sun, let them dry, and then I rip them into one and a half inch strips. And then I wove this rug and made this rag rug. But usually I like to dye all my rugs after they have been woven, so it will tone down the cotton threads. And saving the best for last, here is that gorgeous basket. I wish you could see how dark it is. I don't know why it's not picking up the true darkness of this. I saw some of these baskets on eBay, $500 and up. Simply gorgeous. So if you ever look at a basket in a store and it's super bright white and you don't like it, you like antiques, Take it home and get some walnuts in the fall. Put them on your wood stove, an old pot on your stove in the house, a campfire stove, and boil them for several hours. Drain them, save the juice or tea, whatever you want to call it. And just one afternoon, just take all your baskets and cotton and things like that, set outside, wear old clothes, wear your protective gloves, and just go ahead and do your baskets. If you are new to my channel, we like to do old timey skills, cooking from scratch. I cook on a wood stove, beehive oven, in my fireplace. I have some sewing, quilting, primitive dolls, primitive everything. So hit the subscribe button. Please share on social media. And thank you so much for stopping by. See you on the next video.